Спасибо. Меня зовут Тарья. Окей. Okay. In English. И я хотела бы начать свое выступление с замечательного шведского культурного здания, которое было проектировано yeah. двумя архитекторами Кирсе Коханен и Мика Пентинен. And it is a culture center uh, in the 70s concrete element concrete uh, prefab uh, Uh, style, but also has been influenced a little bit by more expressionistic buildings in Finland. And it used to contain an auditorium, cultural center, and guest rooms for people who came to have special courses in Finland, Sweden, and Nordic uh, relations and culture, etc., etc. But uh, in the last years, of course, the building, and especially its concrete facades and concrete elements, got into uh, bad shape, and something had to be done with it. Данный культурный центр был построен в стиле 70-х годов. В основном он был сделан из бетона, и сейчас фасады они были реновированы, соответственно, также с бетонными материалами. И под влиянием различных культурных течений из Швеции и Финляндии. And now it has been opened, I think, last last year in the summer, and all the queens and princes and whatever from the other other Nordic countries were there. And I have also spent a night there because it has been partly converted into a, a boutique hotel, the old old rooms, dormitory rooms for the people who went there to take some. Courses are now converted into quite a nicer hotel, so I know the place. And also, Mika Pentinen, the architect, showed me it already in the building, building site time. I had helmets and everything, and that was nice. Он был открыт летом прошлого года, и сейчас представлен как бутик отель. Также его посещали различные члены королевской семьи. It is located, I will show the plans very quickly, it's located between Helsinki and Espoo, and now that we have built the new uh, underground line from the center of Helsinki all the way to Tapiola and the, the University of Technology, Alta University, it's very easy to go and see it. It's a nice place, you can take your swimsuit with it, and there's an um, underground station very close to this island, about 500 meters, you are there. And here I just show the, the plans of the building, you see auditorium, old uh, sleeping rooms, etc. storage is like, you know, like cultural centers use, usually have, and of course there was a restaurant, so very basic, but good building as such. Здание расположено между Хельсинки и городом Эсто. Недалеко от здания есть станция метро, поэтому можно достаточно быстро добраться на общественном транспорте. На плане мы можем видеть, который был на предыдущем слайде, соответственно, атриум, также различные кафе, помещения для хранения. But as you see, from the 70s, maybe the quality was not good, the problem, like maybe also in Russia. There are buildings, very good buildings from that time, but something has to be done with them. And my dear colleagues really made their best to do it right, because the elements were covered with small round sort of uh, granite stones, and that they had to be you know, taken away and replaced with others. And they even traveled to the archipelago near Turku to find the, just the right color of granite out of which the new little pebbles were made. So that was also quite, how should I say, they had to have very good hiking shoes when they were trying to get it right. Because some of them, the elements were so good, they didn't, didn't need to be replaced, but the new ones had to be just about exactly the same. So it's well done, I would say. But this is, you see, the beginning situation was quite demanding. Поскольку я упомянула, что здание было проектировано и построено в 70-х годах, то есть у него в настоящее время возникли небольшие проблемы. И стены, они были сделаны из маленьких гранитных камешков, и с течением времени эти камешки должны были быть заменены. И подобный материал, гранит, он достаточно был уникален, и поэтому было потрачено достаточно много времени на поиск данного материала, чтобы он был более похожий на который был изначально. And this is where they, they found the right kind of stone in the, on, on the islands of Kemia, 
near uh, our old, not capital, but uh, our old most important city called Turku. Kemio is very close by on an island. But anyway, that's where they finally find the right kind. То есть, соответственно, вот те камни, из которых была построена стена, были найдены на и разработ и их везли с острова Кемио. And here you can see different examples of different stones before the right kind of stones are found. And here, here are, uh, to compare uh, pictures of the restaurant terrace before on the left side and after. То есть, соответственно, до этого на слайде были примеры стены с э, мелкими гранитными камнями, а также вы могли сравнить э, две фотографии, то есть террасу ресторана до и после реставрации. Also, uh, here is a picture of the main entrance foyer before and after. Также представлены фотографии главного входа до и, соответственно, уже после реновации. And when times go by, also in buildings, new uh, furnishings and tables and textiles and whatever enter the building. And in this building, it was important for the architects to somehow go back to the, the atmosphere of the 70s and bring back the kind of furniture and, and uh, the overall feeling that used to be there. And I think they have succeeded quite nicely. And the idea was also to keep everything materially that is good enough, like the railings and the old doors of the dormitory and cor corridors. So this was not, it was not the idea to replace everything with something trendy and modern, but sort of keep it simple, keep it nice, and do the best with what you have to do by yourself on top of the architecture that was there. То есть основная идея была сохранить вот эту атмосферу 70-х годов, то есть весь интерьер, мебель и различные текстильные изделия, они были также сгенерированы вот именно духом того времени, то есть чтобы оставить ощущение тех годов. But uh, I would say that this is not an example of grand architecture, like architecture by Alto and the Pieti Lab, Raymond Riley, but it is a very solid, good, uh, uh, how should I say, architecture in, in the service of culture and international exchange. And uh, there also the architects themselves were humble enough when they started working on this project, but I think the, the result is absolutely excellent. Я скажу, что это не какая-то популярная трендовая архитектура в дизайне, но такая, скажем, домашняя. И то есть результат мы видим на лицо в обстановке. Also, you see here the restaurant uh, before, all these funny tables, etc., and nondescript furniture. And uh, over there, they try to pick up the, the, the original colors of the carpets that would suit the rest of the building. So it, in a way, you, it in a way takes you back to the fine and optimistic 70s. But it's still, you can see, if you haven't professional, it's a contemporary building with some contemporary additions. Мы также можем увидеть на слайде картинки ресторана до и после. Также видим цвет мебели и ковра, которые делают отсылку к 70-м годам. But they also had to add uh, a new department to the building because on top of the existing concrete element, uh, these, these uh, building masses, is a completely new floor in rather light technology, lightweight technology, and up there are the spaces for the administration of the culture center. And in those spaces you really see now we are dealing with contemporary architecture. Но в данном здании также было построено новое помещение. Мы видим это на верхних этажах, которые наполнены уже наполнены современными мебелью и уже сделаны в современном стиле. And uh, they used to, because copper was used in some parts, it was very popular in the 70s. It's a good material. It wears nicely, lasts long, it's expensive, but they also picked up some materials that are elsewhere in the building. And you can see the sun shading because it's close to the sea. And uh, it's very, very, when the sun shines, it's, uh, the, uh, the sun also hits very hard, the office spaces. So they, they create, uh, created some kind of a net, like um, copper thing to cover a little bit the upstairs uh, spaces and also to make it look a little bit uh, smaller and not so shiny. 
Также во многих элементах был использован материал медь. Тогда он был популярен в 70-е годы. И этот материал, он не такой блестящий, достаточно сдержанный. What I find very good is that even though contemporary uh, elements of architecture were added to this building, the, they, these uh, colleagues of mine re realized that they are not playing anymore the main part in this building, but they have to adjust to the original thinking of the architect who was there before them. Также в здании представлены многие современные различные элементы, которые дополняют здание. Here you see the, again the main foyer. They needed also special expertise in, you know, le leather makers and cabinet makers, etc. So there is uh, a lot more than meets the eye in this simple restoration renovation project. Также мы можем опять посмотреть на фойе и чтобы создать подобную фойе была затрачена работа многих дизайнеров, а также людей, людей, которые занимались перепадами высот, допустим, на лестнице. But it is also now uh, used as a boutique hotel. I highly recommend it because take your swimsuit, you can have a dip in the sea, etc. It's a lovely place and about 10 minutes by underground to the center of Helsinki. So. It's a well-kept secret, to, to, so to say, but some of the spaces were then created for the visitors of the hotel, and this is the main foyer and some breakfast cafe for the hotel guests. Поскольку я уже упомянула, что это бутик отель, то я рекомендую вам его посетить. У него замечательный бассейн на нижнем этаже. Также вы опять можете видеть фойе, главный вход и приятный зал для завтрака. And here is just one uh, image from the upstairs, the new office spaces. And <coughs> quite well, I think, that the new uh, interior architecture, interior cho cho choice of the interior architects of the furniture go very well together with the, the rest of the spaces. А это, соответственно, вид из, офисного, из офиса, который представлен на последнем этаже. Здесь мы можем видеть современную мебель. То есть это из современной части здания. The hotel rooms that are very, very uh, simple, elegant. Everything is high-quality materials, craftsmanship, etc. And in the main role is, of course, the seaside landscape. Также в этом здании мы можем увидеть различные произведения искусства шведского искусства и финского. Все комнаты элегантные, простые, и в данных комнатах представлены картины художников. This is sorry, second time something happened, but this is when I, where I stayed there. This is the room where I could stay, and it was lovely. They had created a bench in front of the window, and some. There's a Swedish uh, fantastic designer, Josef Frank, who made beautiful textiles, textiles, and uh, the interior architects have used it to an extent because they are very colorful. You cannot overdo it. So here and there were flashes of beautiful color. And then especially made furniture, especially for this hotel. Это комната, в которой остановилась госпожа Тарли. На балконе расположена скамейка, откуда открывается вид, а также мебель, которая была спроектирована шведскими дизайнерами. And here are the architects Kirsi Korhonen, Mika Pentinen. Regular kind of people love each other, have different surnames, like in Finland, architecture couple, but they are very competent also in other stuff that they do. But this was one of their first really demanding restoration and, and uh, remaking projects. And it's no grand architecture, it's example to how to really do it right when you get the chance. Как нужно это делать? And now we go to the next. I, I was supposed to take this PowerPoint presentation inside the big thing, but computers and their material don't always match. So I ended up with pictures like this and everything was twisted and turned. So therefore now becomes, comes the second part. And uh, including fine older buildings in the Helsinki region. 
And then there's one from, from Tartu at the end, and you will love it. А теперь мы переходим ко второй части моего выступления от старого к новому в районе Хельсинки. Реставрация, реновация, разумная перестройка зданий. And uh, my lecture is not uh, technological, academical. I don't use any difficult terms as far as restoration, all that is concerned. I've chosen buildings that I like. And that I know from a long time back, and that I love now that they have been redone, etc. We have more, so to say. But these are examples of work by genuinely competent architects who take their profession really seriously, but who also take seriously who was there before them. Также я в своей лекции хотела... Моя лекция, она не академическая, не переполнена техническими терминами. Я бы хотела рассказать о зданиях, которые мне нравятся, и о, соответственно, созданиями архитекторов, которые также обращали внимание, что было сделано до них, и как они это реновировали и реставрировали. And we begin with one of the brand new ones. We have right in the heart of Helsinki, Amos Rex Art Museum, which was a direct commission to JKM Architects, a younger office that has already shown its talent in many ways. So therefore, there was no architecture comp competition organized for this building. We usually organize an architecture competition where all the entries are, uh, you don't know who has done the entries, only at the end we open the envelopes and know who has done the projects. But this one was given to JKM Architects and they were supposed to build a new art museum partly underground, underneath a place where used to we, have, we used to have uh, our bus station. And next to uh, a lovely functionalistic small building or two or three level building called the Glass Palace, and which was supposed to be a building only for a contemporary building, but the Helsinki people loved it and still is there. Прежде всего, я бы хотела рассказать о художественном музее Амас Рекс. Это достаточно новый проект. Он был построен частью под землей, частью в здании стеклянного дворца. И сегодня один из наиболее популярных объектов в Хельсинки. Также госпожа Тарли упомянула, что обычно здание... То есть тендер выигрывает, у них проводятся определенные конкурсы архитекторов. Но данное здание было поручено построить. The Glass Palace was originally opened in 1936 by three young architects. Viljo Revel, Heimo Rimi, Himak, Janilo Kok, all men who won a competition at that time. And uh, it also contained one of the, the finest cinema halls in, in all of Finland in functional uh, style, taking something like 700 seats, plus a very, very beautiful, very beautiful foyer and terrace right in the heart of Helsinki. And of course, restaurants, cafes and shops. Здание было первоначально открыто в 1936 году и было спроектировано тремя архитекторами юного поколения, Велихи Оревель, Хаймо Рихимаки и Нило Кока. И также первоначально представляло собой некапитальное строение. Сегодня в здании находится один из замечательнейших кинотеатров города, а также различные кафе, рестораны, магазины и офисы. And then the Amos Anderson Art Museum moved into the new, new buildings. And uh, the museum now has its main entrance and shop and administration uh, in the old Glass Palace building, but uh, all the new exhibition spaces were built underground in a very, very, very exciting way. You will see pictures soon. And the name Amos Rex was uh, invented in a meeting by a friend of mine. They were thinking, what name, what name? And then Mr. Kai Martin said, Amos Rex. And that means Amos the Queen, the King. And Amos Anderson was a very rich, self-made man who had no family, and he dedicated all his possessions and buildings, etc., for the government of Finland and foundations that are um, concentrating on arts, on the arts and pro promoting arts. And Amos was a Swedish-speaking Finn, and therefore 
Amos Rex. We are grateful to him. Художественный музей Амос Андерсон переехал туда со всеми своими работниками. Сейчас в здании есть главный вход, различные магазины, а также административный департамент. Он находится в стеклянном дворце. Музей, имя Амос Рекс было придумано специально для этого музея. Рекс, соответственно, обозначает король, а Амос — это был человек self-made, который был очень богат, и он решил посвятить свое состояние финскому правительству. Также он был шведский фин. Here are some, uh, I'll try to go fast, some uh, facades of the, the, the old functional stick building where even the, the uh, neon lights remain mostly as they were in the 30s, and we love them. А сейчас я немножко вам расскажу о схеме здания. На фасадах представлены неоновые надписи, как они были в те времена, то есть они были сохранены. And this is the facade to the backyard as it is now, because you see the pressed like funny bumps, and they are the new ceiling for the underground museum, and also accessible for the public. And Natalia has been there a week ago, I remember, I took her there. Также вы можете на чертеже увидеть потолок тех подземных зданий, которые представлены как выставочные холлы. But this, there are more, there's more than meets the eye. This is the section of the museums. And now you see how they, oh, we take the, the natural light inside from these uh, special light channels. And then there's a concrete very, very thick structure which is walkable and skatable and runnable and bikeable, whatever. So it's also an example of a contemporary concrete structure in Finland. In the middle is the former chimney of the building which is now, now used for the ventilation purposes and it's also a landmark of the museum. Если мы посмотрим на картинку, то мы увидим, что свет здания проникает через такие натуральные световые коридоры, которые представляют собой искусственно насыпанные холмы, на которые, на, по которым на улице можно и бегать, и прыгать, и там многие взрослые с детьми проводят свое время. А также мы посередине, если вернемся к предыдущему свадьбу, слайду, там представлена башня, которая представляла собой ранние трубу. Downstairs, the, the exhibition spaces, uh, the round things you see, these are the skylights. And uh, from down here, you see the staircase. It, you go from the Mannerheim Street, one of the main streets in Helsinki, through there, through the old existing buildings, and a beautiful white staircase all the way down to the underground world. And so this is the plan. You see the toilets and the garderobe, etc., etc. I won't explain it more. But this is how it happened. То есть на слайде мы видим выставочные помещения и лестницу, по которой люди спускаются в музей. Это замечательная белая лестница, которая была замечательно сконструирована. And here is the ground floor, the, the street level. The, the parts that are grained, uh, they belong to the Amos uh, Rex uh, Art Museum. And the white parts... The, the, they are civilized people. They let all the good businesses stay in the building because the people of Helsinki are used to having this cafe and this shop, etc. So it's a combination of, uh, of, uh, of uh, commercial building, well-liked commercial building, and then a new cultural building, which also wants to be as open as possible to the public. Помещения, которые окрашены в серый цвет, принадлежат музею, а, соответственно, другие они принадлежат коммерческим фирмам. То есть мы здесь видим синтез культурных, культурной части и синтез коммерческого. То есть в одном здании представлены как коммерческие помещения, так и помещения для искусства. Here is the second level. You see this big gray area. It all belongs to the, to the cinema theater with a big foyer and it's possible from the foyer to come uh, outside and uh, across uh, the street diagonally is the art the Kiasma Art Museum by Stephen Hall so we have uh, now in the center of Helsinki the Ateneum the Kiasma the Amos Rex and the Helsinki City Art Museum etc 
I don't think we needed the Guggenheim. То есть, соответственно, на втором этаже то, что закрашено серым цветом, представлено как кинотеатр. And this is how the people of Helsinki know the building or have known it since the 30s. Это, соответственно, вид здания, как люди в Финляндии видели и видят это здание с, начиная с 30-х годов. And this is the foyer of the cinema theater, an excellent place also to have uh, uh, cinema festivals and also private uh, venues and, you know, dinners and cocktails and whatever. Excellent functionalistic article with uh, architecture with, with beautiful, beautiful soft colors. Соответственно, это фойе кинотеатра, где проходят различные кинопоказы, кинофорумы, кинофестивали, а также частные мероприятия. Соответственно, на слайде мы видим место, которое всем нравится. Мы можем увидеть трубу. Сзади находится театр, а по левую сторону представлены административные корпуса. A publication called uh, it's an architecture publication that uh, is dedicated to building with concrete. I also write for Betoni, it has a fantastic editor in chief. And here is a big article also in English where you can see the some details, construction details of the new part. And of course the old building has been treated beautifully and the cinema theater has been restored. На этом, слайде, на этом слайде я хотела бы показать, насколько была нужна достаточно мощная основа из бетона, а также какие нужны были технологии. И госпожа Тарли представила книгу, в которой также на английском языке, соответственно, описана данная технология. Если кто-то заинтересован в более такой, таком техническом описании, вы можете ознакомиться. And as you see, it uh, needs to be very solidly built. You can see be people riding their bicycles and whatever. And a beautiful day, it's full of, full of people. So, на поверхности можно кататься на велосипедах, отдыхать. И данная территория всегда наполнена людьми. And behind, on the, on the, on the long facade, there is the, uh, the BOREX, the, the main auditorium of, of the cinema. А сзади мы видим фасад здания Биорекса. Это ночной вид здания. Well done, И наверху трубы мы видим неоновые здания, на которых написано Амокс Рекс. One more daytime. Picture, uh, then a picture. When you come in, you can enter the shop, and uh, but you then you buy the tickets in the old foyer of the cinema. And even though you you don't go up to the cinema, you can see the beautiful uh, details of the functionalist time staircases to the main foyer of the of the Biorex. На предыдущем слайде мы могли видеть вид кафе, как только вы заходите в здание, а также лестница, по которой можно спуститься в кинотеатр. And here is the cinema restored as much as possible to its original glory. Only a little bit softer seats we need. We are so spoiled contemporary people. But oh, in, um, apart from that, it's good as new. Это кинотеатр, все было реставрировано в соответствии с первоначальным видом. Единственное, кресла, они более мягкие, чем были до этого. And this is how it works. You are underground, you come down the stairs, there's the garderobe, the ticket office, you can wait for your friends, but then you can see where you actually are. You are in the backyard of the, of the Glass Palace building. На этом слайде... Представлено помещение, где находится гардероб, где вы можете подождать своих друзей, где находятся уборные комнаты, когда вы спускаетесь по лестнице. 
Uh, this is what the JKM architects are very, very good at making these uh, different kind of vistas uh, through buildings and from the ceiling and etc. In many of their buildings, they are becoming masters of it, but they were masters before them, of course. It's good for an architect to learn from architects who have been better than them. Это одно из зданий, которое стало образцом архитектуры, с которого архитекторы берут пример. And now uh, there's uh, a special digital ex uh, exhibition, uh, Japanese digital art with the sound, etc. And uh, it was uh, this is uh, from one of the main exhibition halls. Um, and uh, it has become so popular that you have to wait for a hundred, uh, one and a half hours standing light to get there, but it's great fun. Это световое музыкальное шоу, представленное японской uh, командой, японскими дизайнерами, и оно настолько стало популярно, что вы должны предстоять в очереди около полутора часов, чтобы попасть туда. And now the same. We have other architects as well, but these people have lately been quite competent. The same architects have done a new building or, or renovated uh, one of the worst buildings of the University of Helsinki, a former administrative building in the ugliest concrete element, boring, boring style, right next to the old main building of the university. Следующим объекте я бы хотела бы рассказать. Он был реновирован. До этого он был одним из самых худших зданий, но люди отреставрировали его, и сейчас он является образцом архитектуры. And uh, there was a, a small invited competition in 2015. They, and the building was completed in 2017, so it happened rather fast. Сам конкурс был проведен в 2015 году, а, соответственно, здание было отреставрировано в 2017 году. То есть потребовалось не так много времени, все произошло достаточно быстро. So the title is from a very boring concrete building into a most popular hub. Поэтому можно сказать, что лозунгом к этому зданию стало от, от самого скучного бетонного здания к центру деятельности. And a lot of the skeleton of the existing building was preserved. So just what was bad or not useful, etc., was taken away. But the real building, the, the backbone of the building, remained. And this is what kind of a beauty. Oh, not yet, but please. Основа здания была сохранена. То есть, конечно, какие-то части были реновированы, но именно база, она осталась нетронутой. But this ugly building was right in the heart of Helsinki, very close to the Senate Square and the old university library, university main building, the Senate building. And it was a shame that such an ugly building was built by the university to that place. But uh, shit happens, so to say. Это здание было достаточно близко расположено к Сенату, к Сенатской площади, а также к университетской библиотеке. Поэтому, конечно, было стыдно, что здание в таком состоянии существовало рядом с более красивыми зданиями сената, библиотеки и так далее. But now you see now here the section of the building, but what the architects did was to take down the existing ugly facade and replace it with a uh, white uh, contemporary but still interesting facade and then open open up new ways to end or suck in people into the building. То есть задача архитекторов была снять старый некрасивый фасад и заменить его новым белым современных материалов, а также сделать широкие входы, чтобы публика могла более быстро заходить в здание. And here the grey parts of the building, that's the uh, first floor or the street level, most of that level is open for the students and the general public and can be entered from different sides of the building. And also the public can go one floor down. The gray parts are, are all open for the public or the users of the building. Соответственно, наверху слайда мы можем увидеть планы первого этажа. Вход совершенно свободен как для студентов, так и для обычной публики. А также внизу представлены планы этажа, которые уходят под землю. And now instead of uh, ugly concrete elements, the facade, even though it's very clean, 
sort of a clear surface. It is uh, now covered with uh, um, slabs of beautiful natural stone, quality material. И сейчас фасад облицован хорошим качественным материалом, сделанным из натурального камня. And then they have mastered the use of uh, soft colored uh, wood in the entrances and also in the public spaces so that people feel really invited and at home. Также вход сделан, украшен с помощью мягко окрашенного дерева. In the corner there is a bookstore and uh, this entrance on the left side is across the street from the main entrance to the main university building. На углу находится книжный магазин, а в здание можно пройти с помощью входа в университет. So the building is in a way like Swiss cheese, the, uh, the Emmentaler cheese. То есть, соответственно, здание связано с ближайшей территорией. Here the main entrance. There you can see the natural stone. То есть это, это главный вход. Вы можете увидеть натуральный камень. It's also very beautiful in the evening when the lights are inside. And of course, on top there are office floors and uh, offices for creative young businesses so it's a combination of academic building and business building and creative building but humanistic academic creative i hope он также выглядит замечательно ночью а на верхних этажах мы можем увидеть бизнес офисы для креативных людей в основном для креативщиков связанных с гуманитарными науками and it says uh, very nicely hello to an old uh, university building called Portania, which also has been repaired and restored. So these university buildings in the central campus from different times and ages say nicely hello to each other with respect. Он расположен недалеко от корта Портания. Это старое университетское здание, но они находятся на одной территории, поэтому это комбинирование нового и старого. Они могут сказать друг другу здравствуйте. And the building was made in concrete, and now it's uh, also the, some of the walls are in situ concrete, and but then um, they have taken into use the backyard and made an interior atrium with the lovely skylights in the center. Соответственно, облицовка сделана из бетона, но также мы можем видеть верхний свет, через который проходит натуральный свет с улицы. And this is one floor down in the basement floor. They even have a wooden floor, like uh, which uh, the kind that has been used in workshops and factories earlier. But it's a soft, nice, warm material. And there are all kinds of corners where the students can by the themselves work with their laptops and write love letters, whatever they do, or writing their doctor's thesis. Every, anything goes. Это на подземном этаже, мы видим в интерьере э, дерево. Подобное дерево было раньше использовано в различных мастерских и на заводах, но его сейчас же также используют в интерьере. Здесь можно учиться, соответственно, писать работы на ноутбуке. То есть такое тихое, уютное место. They also have a gym. So it's a multi-purpose building. There's also a gym and a fantastic new staircases that are like sculptures. Remind me a little bit of the art of Mr. Escher and also art of Mr. Piranesi, a famous artist from, from Italy. В здании также есть спортивный зал и лестницы, которые могут считаться произведениями искусства и были сделаны итальянскими архитекторами. This is from another building. It's just to show that these young architects have learned from people who were better than them to begin with. There is an image from the ceiling of the Raymond Riley Pietila Dipoli building from uh, from Otoniemi, and you can see that the inspiration from Pietilas has come directly from Pietilas, but this is a more primitive version, so to say. But anyway, very good try. Если мы посмотрим на потолок, мы увидим, что он очень похож на потолок здания Диполи, то есть когда натуральный свет проникает в здание. And also the same kind of idea goes with the vistas and views 
towards the street, so it works from up the up, etc. So I think it's quite well done. It's like a big sculpture be, uh, that can be seen from the outside, inside the building, and the building was truly boring to begin with. Truly boring. В начале здания действительно было очень скучно. Архитекторы сделали его более разнообразным и многоуровневым. And now it's full of people. In the evenings there are open lectures, then there's a cafe, and there are special spaces with, uh, with if this place is full, uh, some corners with screens so that you can also follow the discussions in some uh, other rooms. I just happened to be passing by and, and I noticed that it's not only students, but people from different ages, maybe people who have studied at the university, etc. It's so easy to go in. And also easy to go out if you don't, you know, feel like being there. Сейчас это помещение очень популярно у публики. Там проходят различные открытые лекции, а также расположены различные кафе. Причем его посещать могут не только студенты, но и люди различных возрастов. And this is just, a, they also have a shop that sells t-shirts and books and etc. This is just a reminder that the University of Helsinki was established already in 1640, but it was then... The name was in Latin and it was in Turku. And then the university moved in the, in the 19th century to Helsinki, but its origin come from the 17th century. Nice colors, used to be the colors of the Communist Party of Finland. В здании также расположен магазин, где можно купить различные свитшоты, на которых написано, что университет Хельсинки был основан в 1640 году. Изначально он был основан в городе Боту, но в 19 веке он переехал в Хельсинки. But they come in many other colors. Anyways, now we go to another uh, student building. It's in Otaniemi, where I studied architecture. Um, and it used to be called the University of Technology which has always had a very active student department. And the uh, technology students, future engineers and architects built together a building called Dipoli. And it's, uh, it was uh, a groundbreaking building, very express expressionistic, completely different from what was done at that time, except for the art office. And it's by Reima and Riley Pietila. They are a couple. A lots of uh, buildings are by the name of Reima himself. That's not true. They worked as a unit. I know it. А сейчас мы переходим к следующему зданию Диполи, которое было спроектировано Рейма и Райли Пелетира. Сама господина Тарли училась там, и это одно из передовых учебных заведений в области технологии, также проектирования. And it was taken into use in 1966. And then slowly and surely things happened to this building. And then it was sold by the students to some business company who started to refurnish some restaurants, etc., etc. So it was uh, not in its beautiful glory until uh, it was sold back to the Alta University. It's now called Alta University in 2014. And then things happened and it's now almost taken back, back to its old glory, and again used by the students and the university and its staff. Само здание было открыто для публики в 1966 году, и до 2014 года, того, как он не был продан Alta University, университета, простите, он не был настолько прекрасен. И именно, наверное, его золотая эра начинается с 2014 года, когда он стал принадлежать Alta университету. And now this work was given to also one of our best studios, Ala Architects, who are now known for their new uh, Central Library of Helsinki, which will be opened on our Independence Day to the general public, the 6th of December. But Ala Architects also has competence to deal with existing modernist or ex expressionist modernist buildings. And they have done a good job. So remember the name, Allah. Реставрация была проведена архитекторами группы Алла. Сейчас они также находятся в проекте по публичной библиотеке, которая откроется 6 декабря. Here you see the Dipoli building in the 60s. You know what happened in the world in the 60s elsewhere, but these people were different. And back there, the red brick building you know, that you can see in the back, 
is the main building of the University of Technology and its auditorium, the department of architecture, etc. This building is on another side of a street on top of a small hill. Здесь мы видим здание, которое было построено в 60-х годах. В 60-х годах люди были немножко другого мнения, а на слайде, если мы посмотрим дальше, там красная крыша принадлежат главному корпусу здания, где находится департамент архитектуры, а также административные корпуса. Two windows alike in the whole building, and of course the use of wood and the interior is fantastic concrete architecture with floating beautiful ceilings. Подобного здания тогда не видели в Финляндии. Оно сделано из бетона, меди, стекла с изогнутыми линии контура. And this is the main entrance and the famous. Uh, It used to be moving the sculpture. It was uh, designed by a student of engineering. And here is another entrance, a more festival entrance uh, from the other side. But here you can see the material and the place where it is on a granite hill with, with the old, old pine trees. На слайде представлен главный вход, сосны, а также статуя, которая была спроектирована отделом инжиниринга данного университета. Here you see the shape of the building. It's like after an explosion, so to say. And here on the right-hand side, you see the, this the big building is the um, University of Technolo Technology Sports Hall by Alvarado. So that is where you will find the building. Форма здания, она как будто после взрыва. И справа можем увидеть главное здание Университета Технологии. And here you see the, the first uh, the entrance floor and it, there's one auditorium which goes down into the cellar and then open space. It's like a floating space and the gray, er, the gray areas are the toilets and, and service spaces and then the office spaces. All our student organizations uh, had over there in their own offices. So I was the... I think the bookkeeper of one of these organizations, we had our offices at Dipoli, so I know the building very well. Мы можем видеть главный ход, соответственно, open space пространство и аудитории, которые находятся этажом ниже. On the second level is what is most fantastic in this building. You see these free shaped spaces, but they could be combined to each other by big, big, heavy wooden sliding doors. And uh, I once, as a, as a teenager, I saw a TV program about the opening of the building with long tables, white tablecloths, all future architects and engineers in their Sunday best eating dinner and opening a building that they had built. And then I decided I definitely will be an architect. На этом слайде мы видим помещение, которое связано между собой широкими деревянными дверями и дизайн этого здания он был показан в одной из телевизионных программ, когда госпожа Тарли решила, что здесь бы она хотела учиться, и она хотела бы это увидеть своими глазами. And now you see the section of the building. I try to go fast, and again the fantastic skylights, but here you can see the undulating shapes of the concrete roof. Мы можем увидеть различные схемы зданий. Я постараюсь их пролистывать немного побыстрее, также с натуральным светом, с верхним освещением. And this is the feeling that you get, get when you enter. It's like entering a okay, cave, but when some new owners took hand of the building, they changed some of the materials that are not actually in, in tune with the, with the original at atmosphere of the building. So it was a very difficult task for the other architects to think what we can still keep because it would be horribly expensive to replace it and bring it back to what it was in the 60s. So compromises had to be made, but the building itself is very strong in its architecture, so it can tolerate some material mistakes. 
В здании некоторые материалы, они были заменены новыми, которые не отвечали духу 60-х, но архитекторы попытались найти компромисс между сохранением атмосферы 60-х годов и новыми тенденциями. Like this floor was originally beautifully made concrete and then replaced by shining, shining uh, um, a stone, but uh, in this process of rene rejuvenating this building, the floor was a little bit made uh, less shiny and there was a compromise, I can live with it. Бетон на этих лестницах был заменен на блестящим камнем, но в качестве компромисса этот камень сделали не слишком блестящим, то есть он был более гладкий и приглушенного цвета. And the fantastic in situ concrete casting work all around the building, plus the metal huge big fireplaces. We were allowed to have real fires then there. Перила сделаны из твердого приятного дерева, оно приятно на ощупь. А здесь мы видим металлический камин. Uh, this is just to show the handwriting of the Pietilas. Of course, the floor is now new. These are the festival halls on the second floor with the skylights and uh, the special, it's very, very uh, Le Corbusier way of lighting it from above. But when all these do sliding doors open, it's like a dream, the whole place. Этот зал мечта, вы можете увидеть, как сделан пол ламинирован, а также из дерева и свет наверху, как рассеянный свет, так и свет, который идет натуральный сквозь отверстие. A little bit more of the atmosphere of the space is some colleagues are criticizing other architects for painting the concrete surfaces white, because I don't think they need to be white. Gray is good. Некоторые критики говорят о том, что белые бетонные стены не должны были покрашены в белое. То есть это вопрос дискуссии. Но они были покрашены именно в данный цвет. But partly the original idea of the Pietilas remains. And also the colors of the, of the sofas, etc. are in, in harmony with how it was in the, in the late 60s. И цвета мебели находятся в гармонии с теми цветами, которые они, которыми были в 60-е годы. And the half underground auditorium where the uh, technology students used to also have their film clubs and such. We are not uncivilized at all. But uh, in that auditorium, a lot of the original Pietilat uh, seating and chairs were just repaired and re-upholstered, etc. And the color is very close to the original. It's a very beautiful space, now, now also used for meetings and such. На данном слайде представлена аудитория, которая находится под землей, и кресла, они были реставрированы и наиболее приближены к тому цвету, который был в 60-е годы. Upstairs there are also these kitchen lines for, it's a big student uh, dining hall in the daytime. I used to also have all kinds of pasta, whatever students eat, and it's still working for the same person, uh, pur purpose, but the kitchen is more, I should say, eclectic at the moment, because the, the students are really, really international at the moment at the Alta University, China, India, etc., etc., это большая столовая, госпожа Тарли сама кушала там, но сейчас кухня она стала более интернациональной, поскольку студенты с разных стран приезжают учиться в данный университет. Of course, they have uh, had a special interior architect who has her own style, and these fantastic, posh, huge, big uh, lounge chairs cost, I think, thousands and thousands of euro each. It, and the other uh, chairs, one can have opinions about whether they are okay or not, but they look nice. Designer, who was involved with the interior, he has his own style. If you look at the big chairs, they have a special color. Then, of course, they have the offices for the student organizations and the university and which are refurnished with contemporary colors and contemporary furniture, I'm fine with it. 
Также в здании расположены помещения, где проводятся административные работы, и они также оснащены uh, современной мебелью. But this I don't like so much because we used to have a beer restaurant in these spaces, and now they have been cleaned up to be a contemporary fine meeting room with the people in suits. So, well, I can live with it, but this, this used to be the place where we drank lots of beer. Раньше в данном помещении был пивной, пивной бар, где студенты могли отдохнуть, расслабиться, а сейчас это стала комната для различных семинаров, а также административной работы. This is one special room by the Pietilas. Mrs. Riley Pietila especially wanted to build for the students a spe special ladies or girls room. And this girls room had a fireplace and the girls, that means future lady architects, etc., could climb up on top and have a rest and whatever and no boys were allowed. But this fantastic fireplace is now restored to back to its glory. But it's now used for by the administration of the university. It's not open for the public. public. Раньше это была комната для девочек, внизу вы могли видеть камин, а также лестницу, куда можно было взобраться и отдохнуть. Но сейчас это помещение предоставлено для административной работы. To begin with, and this is the contemporary, expensive, it, I think, Italian furniture. Well, you can like it; you don't need to like it. But this is how it is. На картинке представлена итальянская мебель, мебель, а на предыдущем слайде была показана аудитория, как она выглядит сейчас. But still, uh, Dipoli has the idea of you one entering a cave, something mystical, something, but something that also gives you the feeling that. You are going to be somebody when you graduate, whatever. It has a strange power still, the whole building. Находясь в этом здании, у вас приобретается чувство, что вы будете кем-то в этой жизни. And still some furniture designed by the Pietilas. Of course, a lot of it was lost, thrown away, but they found, I think, I don't remember, 60 or something chairs that were half broken, but those chairs were now repaired and upholstered and painted in different colors. And all that were found in the building still remained there, which is, I think, I, I give 10 points for that kind of an attitude. Конечно, много мебели было выброшено или исчезло из здания университета, но было найдено, например, 60 стульев, которые были отреставрированы в соответствии с теми цветами и э, характеристиками, которые были в 60-е годы. Окей. Okay. So, yeah. Еще одно здание в моем университете расположено. And, uh, we used to have a... For the University of Technology, a beautiful main library by Alvar Aalto, and now it is the main library of the Aalto University, but it's the same building and something has happened to it. Раньше это была главной библиотекой технологического университета, но сейчас это главная библиотека Aalto University. Now the building has been reorganized so for the Alta University that some spaces from, uh, uh, under, no, under, from the basement and storages and archive spaces have been taken into use and modernized to, to have a more contemporary spaces for students for co-working and, and groups and et cetera, et cetera. And at the same time, the university spaces, the Alta spaces were cleaned, restored, rejuvenated, etc. And this building is a collaboration between JKMM architects who did the new parts and NRT architects who were in charge of the Alta part. And all those things had to be put together. But now the whole place is called the Harald Herlin Learning Center. I wonder why it should be the main library. Сейчас э, помещение реорганизовано таким образом, что используются подсобные помещения, а также помещения, которые были под лестницами. Это совместный проект э, G, архитекторов GKMM и архитекторов фирмы NRT. А также помещение сейчас носит название Harald Herlin, уч, э, название, э, это Harald Herlin учебный центр. But this is the American way. Mr. Herlin has given a lot of money 
But still, for me, it's the main library. Harlett Herlin is an American, and he sponsored the construction of this Okay, but here is the, on the left hand side, this is the old Alvarado University of Technolo Technology main campus. Соответственно, слева вы можете увидеть главный кампус технологического университета. On the left side, you can see white marble on the facade. And Alto used white marble also in an other building to symbolize humanist, humanities live, also live in, in, in this uh, temple of technology, the other building where a marble is used. Department of Architecture, of course. It's on the on this side. But this is where the Harald Herdy Learning Center now is. And there's the main auditorium of the, the Alto University. Слева вы можете увидеть фасады, которые отделаны белым мрамором. Также они, белый мрамор представлен на фасадах здания, которые вы, вы можете увидеть, увидеть справа. And this is the, the atmosphere of an Alto building. Very soft colors, natural colors, shiny natural stone spaces, lots of light. And uh, the Alto office was also very, very precise to think what one sees from the building, what can be seen in, on the outside. So from the outside to the inside, from the inside to the outside. This is one of the entrances of the main library. Весь интерьер помещения сделан в приглушенных тонах, не блестящий пол и мягкие цвета, а также концепция направлена на то, что вы можете увидеть снаружи, что вы можете увидеть внутри здания. And here you climb the stair up, stairs up to the second level, and this is the big main library, where now also the Department of Architecture library books are put, so all the different departments now have their home for their books, and it's a lovely place to read. Поднимаясь по лестнице, мы заходим в помещение второго этажа, где представлена главная библиотека, где хранятся большинство книг по архитектуре. So the feeling of the original Alto building was brought back. Of course, time brings new furniture, new shelves, new kinds of bric-a-brac into spaces, and now the NRT architects have been in charge to bring the real good old Alto atmosphere back. Конечно, в данном здании были принесены uh, новые стулья, новые столы, новая мебель, но архитекторы НРТ постарались сохранить uh, тот дух времени, который был до этого. The difficult part has to be to, to renew the technology, etc., in the building, so that you really cannot see what has been done. Архитекторы постарались реновировать так, что вы не можете заметить, что действительно было сделано. Here are some atmospheric buildings, the winter buildings. There you can see behind the, the copper ceiling of the main auditorium. And then fantastic, expensive, uh, these Alto chairs are available for everybody. It's a luxury environment for anybody who respects quiet studying and in civilized atmosphere. Вы можете почувствовать атмосферу данного здания зимой, а также uh, здесь представлены достаточно дорогие кресла, где можно отдохнуть и почитать. It's open also as a library, the general public can use it. Она также открыта, данная библиотека для публики. Not bad. Неплохо. And this is the handwriting of Alvarado, all the handwriting railings, when you feel them, all the materials, they are still good as new. Это, соответственно, перилы, которые сделаны из дерева, и они выглядят как новенькие. But then come the modern times, and there was available space underneath the library, and the university decided to do new spaces for co-working, group working, team working, whatever. And uh, then the JKM architects were invited to do that part, and they have a very, very good interior architect, Paivi Meuronen. Paivi even uh, has received the national prize, artist uh, prize from the government, so she's not an amateur. But this is her and their handwriting. They, they thought that contemporary people need color and flashy, etc. 
but it is very popular for um, students and groups who want to talk and bala bala when they work. And there's also commercial ca cafeteria uh, on the upper level. But this is the handwriting of uh, younger architects in the same building. You can judge for yourself what you think. А это помещение было э, сделано архите... дизайнером по Армении. Вы можете увидеть различные цвета, трендовые, которые были популярны, и мягкую мебель, которая служит для совместной работы, где студенты могут делать совместные проекты, э, читать и заниматься научной деятельностью. But this is, uh, this is the handwriting of Mrs. Paivi Meuronen. She has created these little caves and in the quiet and soft places where you can go by yourself and concentrate on whatever you are doing, love letters or doctor's thesis, anything goes. Кружки — это особый стиль Пайма Мермен, который сделал данное помещение, где можно читать и отдохнуть. And all the, the idea of breaking the hole into the floor and creating the new staircase um, are by JKMM. Upstairs there's a commercial cafe, cafeteria, but still with Alto furniture, etc. Furniture is Alto and added to by contemporary furniture and colors. And the lamps, of course, are by JKMM. Также его особым стилем является разделение пространства на два этажа. На верхнем этаже находится э, кафе и, конечно, лампы, которые все с потолка. There's also a black, like cave-like uh, department with these fantastic plastic hang, hang, hanging bu bubbles, which make an, an acoustic thing uh, around you. Also very, very popular for people who want to write and be by, by themselves. And you can also swing a little bit if you want to. Также в помещении расположен черный уголок, где находятся, похожие на пузыри кресла. Данное помещение обладает замечательной акустикой, и даже на этих креслах можно покачаться. And this building also, the combination of the, the restored and rejuvenated Alto library halls and the new learning, the new spaces downstairs also uh, received the Finnish Architecture Finlandia Prize. So, good work. И здание, которое было реставрировано, реновировано, также завоевало приз архитектора Финляндии. But I might might think that maybe this pink and orange might get out of fashion with a few years and then Houston we have a problem. Но я боюсь, что оранжевый и розовый цвет будут не в моде через несколько лет и тогда у нас будет проблема. Well, we'll see, but it's it's great fun and, and full of people anyway. And now I have one special project that has nothing so much to do with the flashy contemporary architecture, but it is a, a fantastic building by Eliel Saarinen, one of our top architects in Finland, and his main work on the soil of Estonia in the beautiful university town of Tartu. And Tartu University also has existed there for hundreds of years, but Saarinen was there only once. А теперь я хотела бы показать проект, который был сделан архитектором Эли Сарина на эстонской земле. And this uh, is a special project because it has nothing to do directly with restoring. It has nothing to do with updating. It has a lot to do with what, how to treat a fantastic building that never became what it was supposed to be according to the original designs, and uh, what to do with the building that was almost destroyed by the horrible times that my parents and maybe some of your parents have had to suffer, and what to do with the building that still has a lot of potential and whom to do it with. And this is the story of the Eliel Saarin and St. Paul's Cathedral in Tartu. А теперь я хотела показать историю здания, которое не имеет отношения к реставрации или к реновации, которое было разрушено, но 
были эскизы этого здания, и данные эскизы не были приведены в жизнь, то есть они были немножко отдельно от здания. Но также история о здании, которое имеет много потенциала. So this is the, the, the St. Paul's Cathedral as it is now, but we go a little bit back in history, about a hundred years. This is Eliel Saarinen, Finnish architect, who worked together with Gesilius and Lindred, but uh, who was brave in, uh, enough also at the age of 50, when he didn't have too much work anymore in Finland, to pack his family and things and go at the age of over 50, to go over the Atlantic and establish in Michigan a Grand Cranbrook Academy, where he also designed new buildings in a little bit new style. It But this is him. Hats off. Это история человека, вы его можете видеть на фотографии Эля Сарнен, который в возрасте 50 лет, он уехал за Атлантику в Америку и организовал там архитектурную академию. And also he has a son, Eero Sarine, who's very well known also for his collaboration with Charles and Ray Eames, who happened to meet Eero and the Sarines at Cranbrook. That's another story. But uh, anyways, father and son. But we now stick to Eliel Saarinen. He was very skillful, fantastic, fantastic in, in craftsmanship ship and drawing, and they built together the famous Vitresk, these three architects with their families together. Saarinen also uh, took part in, in American architecture competitions and also designed fantastic furniture as well. На предыдущем за, э, слайде мы могли видеть фотографии Эли Сарина и его сына, который также взаимодействовал отцом и был достаточно знаменитым человеком. А также э, сам Эли Сарина был очень искусным мастером и э, выигрывал многие проекты. He's one of his most famous buildings, of course, of course the Helsinki railway station. When you come by train from Moscow, that's where you end up in. And that was built and realized uh, to be bigger than Helsinki was at that time, and it was finished be before our civil war and before we became independent. So it was designed in quite modern uh, style in the, at the time when Finland was still a Grand Duchy of Russia. So it was not a, a, a project of uh, independent Finland, but fresh and new and modern, as you see. Эту башню мы можем видеть на железнодорожном вокзале, когда мы прибываем из Москвы. И данный проект был выполнен до гражданской войны, до, до тех пор, до того времени, пока э, Финляндия приобрела независимость. То есть мы можем сказать, что этот проект был выполнен, когда Финляндия была еще зависимой страной. He also designed uh, several city halls in Finland. I just show a few of them. But then this uh, design he made to be a killer image with which he would impress the commissioners in Tartu who wanted to have a new church with the side buildings. Он, он также спроектировал несколько городских помещений, и эти проекты данных помещений были его визитной карточкой, которая действительно впечатлила uh, людей, которые занимались коммерческой деятельностью в Тарту. Uh, this uh, drawing comes from 1911. Данный эскиз был спроектирован в 1911 году. At the same time, Sarin and like a few other Finnish people were designing very good buildings in Estonia. We were very close together and the Estonians respected the know-how from our side. But anyway, at the same time, he did a fantastic uh, uh, business and uh, apartment building right in the heart of Tallinn. My good friends, KTA architects, had their nice office at the on the top of that building, overlooking the old town. They were lucky. But very, very beautiful Saarinen building from that same, same period of time. В то время Финляндия шла впереди Эстонии в области технологий, и в, Финлянд... и в Эстонии брали э, финский ноу-хау. Соответственно, на предыдущем слайде мы видели здание э, в основном с офисными помещениями, которое было, которое было спроектировано данным архитектором. Сарин also worked on the general plan for Great Tallinn. This is one of his drawings. It never came out. out. It never re was realized. And as well, he also was uh, working on a Greater Helsinki big uh, city plan. There's a fantastic book about both of these designs. Unfortunately, in Helsinki, only a small part 
was realized. Он также работал над генеральным планом Таллин, но, к сожалению, он не был реализован. Реализованы были лишь небольшие, небольшая часть этого плана. And he also took part in the competition for the Parliament of Finland, and this is his handwriting. He did his drawings, and, and uh, those can also be some of them can be seen in Vitresk in Helsinki. If you ever come to Helsinki, take the bus and train and bus and go and see it. And there's in the atelier some original fantastic drawings are available for the public to see. Он также принимал участие в конкурсе по созданию финского парламента. И эти эскизы сейчас можно увидеть в музее, с помощью которого можно добраться на общественном транспорте. He also took part in the Chicago Tribune competition. And there are also other projects. Oh, this is the Cranbrook Academy, also designed by him. They called it the Camelot of architecture and design, something completely new in America. But anyway, all these buildings have something to do with the styled style that can be found in the Tartu church. Therefore, I showed them. Это была Академия Кринбург, которая также была спроектирована данным архитектором, когда он эмигрировал в США. So we go now back to 1911, after which the the church actually was built very much according to Sarinen's plans, but. His idea, he experimented very much with concrete, but the balconies around the church were never realized in concrete for some lack of money, and they were built in wood. Мы возвращаемся в 2019 год, когда была построена церковь, но балконы, которые окружали церковь, согласно плану, не были построены из бетона, они были построены из дерева из-за недостатка денежных средств. And the, but later on, the windows were, you know, covered because uh, some people in Tartu wanted to have this giant uh, sculpture in the in the on, at the altar, which I think doesn't go together with uh, with Sarinen's architect. It was their church and their decisions. Anyway, these images are from the time before today. Mm-hmm. Многие окна были заложены, а также поставлена эта гигантская статуя, которая, по мнению госпожи Тарли, не соответствует интерьеру. The buildings, the sym- it was never to be symmetri- completely symmetrical, but only the left side building on that side of the, the main tower was realized, so it was like half amputated anyway. Здания никогда были не симметричны, но все же какая-то определенная симметрия где-то присутствует. And here is a picture of the awful times that I do hope that none of us want to have back after the bombardment of Tartu. The the church suffered like you see a lot and also all the wooden interiors burnt and uh, just the skeleton of the brick brick uh, walls uh, were remaining. А это фотография тех времён, которые я думаю никто из нас не хотел бы повторить и и остов той разрушенной церкви. And then, of course, time and nature. So this was like nature was all, almost taking over the building. Uh, there was nothing left of the just bits and pieces and the, of the big sculpture. sculpture. But then the Tartu people uh, decide, decided that they, they will want to rebuild the church uh, as good as they can. But uh, then the church was not used as a church, but later was used mostly as a storage for the National Museum and also flea markets and stuff. But it had already a roof on top of it and also the the tower had windows and the top of the tower was was made in metal it also must have taken a hard work but the the tartu people love the building and the idea of recreating a sar in a building in in the middle of the на предыдущих фотографиях мы видели все что осталось от церкви и с течением времени на территории данной церкви был блошиный рынок, а также использовали для хранения различных материалов. Но идея реставрирования церкви, она была в воздухе. То есть люди хотели реновировать это здание. But then somehow, Maria uh, Nieminen and Kari Ervinen, they are a couple. Maria has also worked together with the academician uh, 
Oh, you have Leiviska and Professor Wilhelm Helander, so she's very competent and they are working together. Kari is a little bit older than her, but now they work as an architect couple. As you don't have to explain all of it, but you know, just a couple. Меня попросили не переводить не все, то есть этот проект был проектирован парой крайми архитекторов. And so it so happened that they uh, they got in contact with the Tartu, uh, with the parish of Tartu. It's a Lutheran church, and also the city of Tartu, and maybe some uh, European money was given there. But there was a big willpower in Tartu, and uh, Estonia is not a very religious country for some reason, but in Tartu, this congregation was very strong, and they also started collecting money for repairing. So there are lots of, how should I say, sm small streams of money and will and energy somehow met, and then Maria and Kari got the com com commission to be in charge as architects. Был налажен определенный контакт с церковью в Тарту, где стали собираться пожертвования, чтобы церковь была построена, а также, возможно, были деньги с некоторых европейских стран. Know-how, craftsmanship, also some uh, detective work because original drawings were missing, the building was in bad shape, etc. And also, it has taken a lot of creative architects' mind to bring some new parts into this fantastic church building. Достичь такого результата, все, что мы видим сейчас, стоило больших трудов архитекторов, дизайнеров, потому что многие работы искусства, они были утеряны. And also, like you see, the, all the lamps and things were destroyed. I, I don't want to, to show you too many pictures of the time when it was bad, but here still are some uh, drawings of the church, as хочу... it was never realized. Я не хотела бы утомлять вас с чрезвычайным количеством слайдов, но это определенные планы, как церковь должна была выглядеть. Правая часть никогда не была построена. But they studied all kinds of drawings that they could get their hands on, and also they studied details of other Sarinian buildings from that time in order to to get an idea what kind of a concrete balconies there should have been instead of the ones that burnt. Когда планировалась yep. постройка данной церкви, то были изучены материалы проектов uh, Сарина, на каким образом выглядела церковь в то время и какие были балконы. But they thought, and also the commissioner, that everything must be done in really high quality. No metal roof, just real brick roof, etc. So if you start working on a project like this, just do it right to, from the beginning. I now am running out of time, but I show how it is today with the restored beautiful oak doors and the front yard. Начав строить проект, архитекторы решили, что нужно делать все хорошего качества, поэтому не стали делать железную крышу. Сегодня мы видим с внутренним двориком и yeah. с деревянными дверями. Couple of minutes. Here is from the from the balcony where the organ is. You can see the new, newly constructed balcony. All the furniture are designed by Marianne Curry, and the new artwork, because it was destroyed, is by a Finnish artist Kuti Lavonen. And this is uh, also to show that a lot of international collaboration went, went into finding the concrete workshops, the, the cabinet makers, everything. And Maria and Kari had to learn uh, Estonia and vice versa. And I just show how beautiful it is now. And it also functions as a concert hall for the town of Tartu. And the concert hall takes more than a thousand people. I was there in a concert with Arvo Parts music. It was just fantastic. Эти виды мы можем увидеть из балконов, которые были сделаны из бетона вариантом карми. Конечно, в этой церкви мы можем найти отражение взаимодействия разных архитекторов, и данная церковь вмещает около тысячи человек. 
And also, then I show that there's a small part of concrete uh, contemporary architecture below, underneath these spaces. A special space has been created uh, to remember the dead people who have been uh, cremated, and there's a special columbarium in completely contemporary architecture in, in uh, concrete behind these beautifully crafted doors. I'm soon finishing. В подземной части здания мы также види, можем видеть крематории, а также помещение, где представлены железные двери с узорами. And there's also water like the river of death. You can hear the sound of the water. You enter a completely different atmosphere. And behind the church is a lovely garden of remembrance where you can go and think about your dead relatives or friends. I'm sorry I took so much time, but if you ever go to Tartu, go to a concert in the, in the church, they did a very good work. Everybody who was involved. I thank you very much.